in any society men and women play equal role but unfortunately in most of the societies women are considered as vulnerable groups and they are also socially excluded our country also is not an exception to this let us see the position of women in our country how they are excluded and what type of intervention strategies we are having in our country so that their position can be developed and they can develop they can empower themselves let us see some idea about the status of women in our country the reason is in any society social exclusion will not happen in a vacuum it always is linked with historical aspects or historicity of a particular group and its origin development are very important in order to understand social exclusion when we talk about women's position in our country we usually consider studying women's position starting from vedic period the resources available in order to understand the status of women during vedic period are mostly our smritis or shrutis various epics like ramayana mahabharata literature and other resources on the basis of these resources we can understand during vedic period men and women were having more or less equality in rigvedic era women were also given opportunities to educate themselves they were able to participate in various decision making activities they were also having a right over property not only that women was considered as a crucial point in order to take any decision or take any action for the benefit of the entire society but slowly women's position started deteriorating their positional status is started decreasing when we come to the medieval period our country was invaded by various other communities including persons from central asia during this period it so happened women was looked down upon each and every community or caste started thinking that there is a need to curb control and put women in a particular position where they will not be given any opportunity to participate in political decision making or they cannot have any economic status as such or in other words whatever work they are doing that will not be given any use value this situation created lesser social position to women slowly when we entered into 18th 19th centuries women's position became miserable various social problems linked with women's position whether it is child marriage or ban on widow remarriage or not having any right to property or not able to participate in various types of economic pursuits or not able to study and educate themselves this was a situation during 18th and 19th centuries all of us are well aware during 19th century europeans also came to our country and they started ruling us and slowly various social reformers beat raja ram mohan rai or dayanand saraswati or keshava chandra sen or mahatma gandhi they thought that women also should be given importance in all activities hence they emerged schools and colleges for women but unfortunately these colleges or schools etc were available only to one particular section of the society mostly upper caste and upper class people whereas many people living in villages because india is considered as a country of villages and many rural women were not given any chances to improve their socio economic position they were not empowered and this continued not only continued still it is being continued this scenario talks about how there is a disparity between men and women in our country let us take certain parameters literacy is one such parameter 
health is another parameter, career and career development is another parameter, educational standards is another parameter, whether a person is able to take a decision within it, her or his own domestic sphere is another parameter, whether a person or persons are oppressed or suffering with some kind of violence whether psychological or physical violence all these can be taken into consideration as parameters which describe exclusion which describe vulnerability of women we come across women are being discriminated there is a lot of disparity between literacy rates of men and women in our country and many women are given in marriage by 18th or 19th year of their life. In other words, age at marriage is still low in our country. When age at marriage is still low, obviously it leads to less education or less career mindedness among women. Not only that, in our country compared to some of the developed countries, we are having maternity as well as infant mortality rates on the higher side only. Even this also describes health is not given much importance if it is the health of a woman. Even today many women particularly from tribal hamlets or villages are not able to have health facilities. We are having millennium development goals but despite that health position or health status of our women is comparatively very less. All these aspects talk about status of women as an excluded group in our country. When we are preparing for any examination, is this relevant? Any student would have this doubt, but this is relevant. The reason is when we are preparing for an examination, examiner would definitely like to see certain skills a student acquires unless and until we understand the historicity of a particular topic or various aspects related to a particular topic he or she will not be able to do justice even though they learn various details about simply strategies or schemes hence we have to have some light on the historicity or development of women or status of women in our country. Just now we discussed about that only. Let us see what type of questions we can expect from this. We usually expect questions related to status of women. For instance, during Rig Vedic period, women was able to participate in social, economic, political and educational activities. So, on this basis, a, an examiner would like to test upon a student. We can also expect questions on the position of women during medieval era. For instance, who tried to reduce certain cultural norms which created lot of vulnerability or which excluded women? For instance, the sati a kind of cultural norm which was prevalent during 18th 19th century was questioned by various social reformers and thanks to Raja Ramamohan Rai who tried to influence the then governor general Lord William Bentick and there emerged a legislation banning prohibiting sati as a cultural norm. Right to property is another aspect which talks about economic empowerment of women. Widows were not given any right to property. Not only that, reversionary rights of property was there. For instance, a person, a woman is empowered to have property of her husband once her husband dies. But when she dies, she cannot give that property to any of her children. That property goes back to her joint family. This is known as reversionary right to property. This was a situation during medieval era. Even questions may come on this also. When we talk about various details about legislations or various legal provisions, we usually consider 
who tried to legislate upon on what grounds here let us have some light on that let me give some examples manu స్త్రీలకు సంబంధించిన అంతస్తు గురించి మాట్లాడినప్పుడు చారిత్రికంగా స్త్రీల స్థితిగతులు ఏ రకంగా ఉండినాయి ఒక్కసారి చూడాలి ప్రశ్నలు ఏవైనా వచ్చినప్పుడు అప్పుడప్పుడు మధ్యయుగాల్లోనో లేదా పద్దెనిమిది పంతొమ్మిది శతాబ్దాల్లోనో స్త్రీలు ఎదుర్కొంటున్న సమస్యలు వాటికి సంబంధించిన ప్రశ్నలు వచ్చే అవకాశం ఉంది లెట్ ఇస్ టాక్ అబౌట్ లెట్ ఎస్ ఏ బ్యాన్ ఆన్ విడో రీమ్యారేజ్ వెన్ సంస్కృటైజేషన్ ప్రాసెస్ వాజ్ గోయింగ్ ఆన్ many caste communities try to follow different cultural norms of upper caste usually ban on widow remarriage is one such situation and this resulted in problems for women so a question may be given what was the reason for banning widow remarriage even today we are facing a problem of widows in many areas of our country widows are simply sent to a particular place there they are supposed to live they are not having any economic support so here how women are vulnerable on what grounds then your answer should be on economic grounds on social grounds on cultural as well as on political grounds a question may be there even on whether women were having any political power during vedic period post vedic period medieval or during european colonization in all these cases women were not having any political power they were not politically empowered only 1920 decade when mahatma gandhi invited women to participate in the freedom struggle slowly women started participating in political activities and slowly they started giving their ideas so that political decisions can be taken into consideration so like this you can have some questions on historicity of women and their position let us proceed to various provisions which we are having in order to include women into our developmental scenario when we talk about inclusion of women we'll be talking about two aspects what rights are available for women and what issues are to be considered either by as individuals non governmental organizations and by the government when we talk about rights we have to start with the constitution of india the reason is in our country constitution clearly says we the people of india the entire power power, power to give rights our duties is linked with constitution only we will be assigning powers we will be assigning rights to people hence we will be starting with constitution of our country in order to understand what rights are available for women under various provisions of constitution when we talk about constitutional safeguards meant for women we can divide them into three different chunks the first and foremost one is fundamental rights these fundamental rights are available for all all citizens of our country but some articles of constitution clearly talk about protective legislation or positive discrimination second aspect of constitutional safeguards include directive principles of state policy directive principles of state policy direct the state government to take up various strategies prepare some schemes implement them prepare some policies and implement them then the third one is various amendments made to our constitution taking the position of women into consideration no discrimination against any citizen on the ground of sex state can make special provisions for women article 16 equality is opportunity for employment or appointment to any office under state article 13 9a state governments are directed to frame their policies 
towards securing men and women the equal right to adequate means of livelihood. Article 39A equal opportunity and free legal aid by suitable legislation. Article 42 provision for securing just and humane conditions of work and for maternity relief. Article 46 promoting the educational and economic interests of weaker sections and protection from social injustice exploitation of all forms. Article 47 state is directed to raise the level of nutrition standard of living and improvement of public health. Article 51A clause E renouncing practices derogatory to the dignity of women. Constitutional amendments particularly 73rd and 74th amendments Article 243D, Article 243T not less than one third of the seats to be filled by direct election in every panchayat to be reserved for women. Not less than one third of the total number of seats of municipality be reserved for women. Article 243T Clause 4 Reservations in office of chairpersons in municipality for women in such a manner as the legislature of state by law provides. There are various legislations which are aimed to reduce crimes against women or improve socio-legal position of women, be it the Constitution of India or Indian Penal Code or Indian Evidence Act or Criminal Procedure Code or various women specific legislations have many provisions. For instance, just now we saw constitutional provisions which provide safeguards for women. Indian Penal Code is having so many provisions which protect women from different crimes besides general provisions which prevent any citizen or any person from crimes. For instance, various cultural norms derogatory to the position of women are considered as crimes. If any woman is kidnapped without her consent, even that also is a crime under the provisions of Indian Penal Code. Not only that, Indian Penal Code is having a chapter on offences against marriage where it is clearly mentioned bigamy is an offence. This provision in many cases provides respite and protection to women who may be simply discarded by her husband in order to take another wife as his wife. Dowry Prohibition Act came into existence during 1960s but along with that there are so many provisions even under Penal Court as well as Criminal Procedure Court. Under Criminal Procedure Court if any woman is not having any means of subsistence she can claim for maintenance from her husband or parents or male relatives. Section 125 of Criminal Procedure Code talks about this. When we are talking about legislations related to include women, we consider three basic legislations as very, very important ones. These three legislations are important because they cover three different fields of women's life. First field is her domestic life. Second one is where she is working that is workplace. Third one is various crimes which are committed against her or there is a threat that these crimes may be committed against her. When we talk about workplace, we usually start with Vishakha guidelines where Supreme Court gave so many directions for the protection of women, particularly women who are working. We also talk about 2005 legislation, namely Prevention of Domestic Violence Against Women Act of 2005, which was implemented from 
2006 onwards. Another legislation which we have to consider as a very important legislation is very recently it has come in the year 2013 that is amendment of criminal law act of 2013 which amends not only women specific legislations but also procedural laws of this country, penal laws of this country. Popularly it is also known as Nirbhaya Act. Let us have some idea about these legislations which are exclusively meant to include women, protect women or safeguard women. The first legislation let us start with domestic life. Men and women in any family play a vital role but many women are the sufferers of violence within their own domestic sphere and that too from their male relatives whether husband or father or brother or son whenever such violence is there then such violence will not be tolerated and Domestic Violence Protection Act is a strategy which protects women. This enactment talks about three major aspects. What type of violence will be considered as violence and punishable? And the second aspect is whether women can claim for maintenance or right to say stay within her domestic area spatially whether domestic violence is limited to only husband or it is extended to her male relatives who are empowered to take action against the persons committing various crimes or violence against women is also another important aspect of Domestic Violence Act. Let us see a presentation here. Protection of Women Against Domestic Violence Act of 2005 clearly talks about three aspects. Firstly, habitual assault or violence against women, particularly against her life because of the cruelty of conduct including physical maltreatment. If any person forces a woman to lead an immoral life or if any person causes injury or harm to women, it is punishable under this enactment. During 20th century, many women started working outside their homes. Not only that, many women started improving their educational qualifications and career mindedness also is improving among the women. When this happens, obviously one more aspect also we have to say that is sexual harassment at workplace. When women and men are not having equality, when they are trained or socialized in certain gender stereotypes, many women are looked down upon or belittled by others saying that women cannot do certain activities at all, women cannot be good decision makers or women cannot be the bosses. When any woman try to enter into the boss field, then she may have to face the music which also is considered as harassment. We come across in most of the offices where women are working, they are harassed sexually. Here this harassment is linked with their gender because they are women, they are harassed. That may be asking them to stay back beyond the office hours or that may be trying to intimidate them or threaten them with direct consequences or any other form it may take. Against this particular sexual harassment, the Supreme Court of India prescribed various guidelines in a very famous case known as Vishakha case. On the basis of Vishakha guidelines, we have also enacted upon sexual harassment and protection against sexual harassment for women. This enactment provides safeguard for working women. 
but this enactment is applicable to various workplaces both organized as well as unorganized or non-organized workplaces. This enactment is having three major provisions. Who is an aggrieved person? It is clearly defined in this enactment. Whoever is harassed at workplace is an aggrieved person. Particularly, it is a women specific one. Hence, aggrieved person is always considered as women only. Then secondly, what is a workplace? Whether it is office or an organized sector or any other place, the enactment clearly defines what a workplace is and whether any harassment is sexual harassment for the purposes of this act or not is dependent upon the definition of workplace. It also talks about complaints committee. Each and every office is under a duty to establish a complaints committee and this complaints committee is given lot of power. This complaint committee works as a court. Various complaints from women against sexual harassment will go to this complaint committee. Complaint committee will see and also dissolve them by punishing the culprits. Let us see a presentation here. Protection of Women Against Harassment at Workplace Act of 2012 covers various students as well as working women in schools, colleges and also patients in hospitals and employers. Local authorities have to set up grievances committees to investigate all complaints. Workplace is defined as a place where there is clear employer-employee relationship. Complaints committees have the powers of civil courts for gathering evidence and they also provide for conciliation before initiating an inquiry if requested by the complaint. If any complaint is submitted to the complaints committee, the inquiry should be completed within a time period of 90 days. Another gender specific or women specific enactment is Criminal Law Amendment Act of 2013 which is popularly known as Nirbhaya Act. This enactment made amendments to the Indian Penal Code, Indian Evidence Act as well as Criminal Procedure Act. This enactment clearly defines and also prescribes punishment for certain offences where women only can be the aggrieved person. These include acid attack, sexual harassment, voyeurism, rape and also related offences, particularly stalking and other offences. This enactment clearly provides capital punishment or death penalty for rape. After Nirbhaya's incident which occurred in our capital city, Delhi, Law Commission made this amendment and it came into force from 2013 onwards. For the first time, stalking and voyeurism are considered as offences which are gender specific where only women will be the aggrieved person. Let us see few points as presentation. Under the Criminal Law Amendment Act of 2013, acid attack is punishable with fine up to rupees 10 lakh. Sexual harassment is punishable with 5 years imprisonment. Various other legislations also are there which are aimed to protect women. Let us take some examples. For instance, Dowry Prohibition Act of 1961. Here, offences related to marriage, particularly if any party to marriage takes dowry or gives dowry as a consideration or in continuance of marriage, then that is punishable under the Dowry Prohibition Act. If any dowry is given by a woman or her parents to the bridegroom or bridegroom's family or any other person, 
whatever dowry is given that should be returned back to the woman or bride within 6 months of her marriage as per the section 6 of dowry prohibition act not only that onus of proof is always on the person who is arrested for taking dowry husband or relatives of husband can be taken into custody if a woman files a case against her husband for various provisions of dowry prohibition act along with dowry prohibition act we come across two provisions one in indian penal code namely section 498a and section 113b in the indian evidence act which talk about various punishments how to prove the case it is not only dowry even maternity also is a very crucial one because it is always women who gives birth to a child and unless and until women give birth to children society cannot run we need people for our society's survival aren't we hence we have maternity benefit legislations also there are so many offenses being committed against women whether they are female feticide or female infanticide many a times in some states particularly a fetus particularly female fetus is being aborted the reason is they say no it's very simple if a woman is there then we may have to pay a lot of dowry for her marriage because of this it is better if we kill her when she is only as a fetus but this is not accepted by our government nor by our legislature nor by any of us right hence we are having various legislations against this we are having a central legislation namely pndt act we also have legislations where illegal trafficking of women is banned we have legislations though they are meant for all many items we come across women specificity in these legislations for instance legislation related to minimum wages act or legislation related to factories where certain shifts should not be given to women or certain provisions should be made for women whether it is establishing a crash or whether it is establishing a kind of shelter home for a woman we also have legislations linked with women's education right to education is one of our fundamental rights and women should be given importance in order to go to a school and study all these legislations are aimed to include women all these legislations provide various rights to women whether that is right to life and liberty or right to life or right to livelihood or right to employment or right to education right to maternity benefit right to have tension free marital life or right to have protection against any type of violence these are all rights available to women because of intervention strategy from above all these rights are given to women in our country but in practice many a times women are not able to exercise all these rights even today we come across women are being discriminated against on two counts we can say this discrimination women themselves will not take any initiative to exercise their rights and participate in the competitive world secondly many a times women are discriminated upon because they are women in such a situation what should be done intervention strategies from above clearly provided various policies and schemes in order to improve the position of women for instance in our country we have national policy for women which was prepared as a comprehensive policy in the year 2001 we have national women's commission which is aimed to 
not only legislate upon but also bring awareness amongst women related to various legislations. We have state level women's commissions also. Besides this, we particularly starting from 12th plan onwards are giving lot of importance for girls education, gender audit, gender budgeting, these words we are using very frequently. Gender budgeting provides financial resources for taking up various activities for the benefit of women and girl children. Gender audit is linked with how we are spending whatever taxpayers money we are utilizing for developmental activities or the fruits of developmental activities available to women will be auditing it under gender audit. We usually consider inclusive rights of women under three major dimensional aspects. We call it as empowerment. If a person is able to take her own decision in all aspects of her life, that is empowerment, right? When we talk about empowerment, we consider three major areas of empowerment social, economic and political empowerment. Constitutional Amendment Act, particularly 73rd and 74th Amendment is aimed to bring political amendment. Under uh, these two amendments, one third of the seats at local governments as well as in other political offices are reserved for women. Not only that, we are thinking of giving 33% reservation in all political offices of the government for women. This is meant for political empowerment. When we come to the question of economic empowerment, we talk about equal importance, equal opportunities or equal pay for equal work no discrimination in offices, various insurance schemes available for women, equal wages, all these talk about economic empowerment. Then the third dimension of women and her inclusive rights are social empowerment. Here we will be considering various aspects of women. Firstly, whether she is having opportunities to educate herself or not. In other words, educational empowerment. Unless and until a woman is educated, she cannot exercise her rights. Government has taken up various programs in order to improve educational attainment of women. We also consider health as another criterion in order to empower women socially. Third aspect of social empowerment includes if any derogatory cultural norms are there which reduces the dignity of women, how to curb them or what measures we can take. Here we also have to talk about a kind of socialization. When a girl is born starting from birth onwards till her death, various provisions she requires. We have a variety of schemes and programs started by our state as well as central governments related to social, political and educational empowerment which protects women. Let us take our national policy for women 2001 which provides a basis for all these schemes and policies. We have taken up various schemes related to the empowerment of women, be it health or education or economic empowerment. National Literacy Mission, under this, Satchar Bharat is a scheme which we have taken up, where girl children education is given priority. We also have provisions where we allot budget for establishing schools 
for children and taking up various activities for the benefit of girls and particularly girls education women's health is given utmost importance by our governmental schemes both at central level as well as state level for instance janani suraksha yojana or janani sisu suraksha yojana or kishor balika yojana such programs are aimed to cater the health needs of women we have different programs which are aimed to protect women on all grounds particularly on health indira gandhi matrutva samrakshana yojana is one such program various women from different communities if they are facing any distress in order to cater the needs of these distressed people we have a program namely swadhar swadhar program is a home based and need based program we also have programs like integrated child development or different aspects related to public distribution system or different aspects related to giving importance to women in various economic activities started by and run by national child welfare department <coughs> in order to provide incentives for the benefit of women and persons working for the betterment of women national government has started stree shakti puraskars in the name of women leaders these puraskars will be given these names of women leaders include devi ahalya bai rani rudrama devi and various others rani rudrama devi puraskar will be given for both men and women whereas other puraskars will be given to women who has done eomens work related to women and their development different aspects related to economic pursuits of women we have many programs for instance skill development programs are there both and a state as well as central government we have these programs presently we are having startup programs where women entrepreneurs are given lot of importance we also have programs specifically for tribal women whether tribal women's health or tribal women's economic position we are having these programs different aspects of women's life is taken into consideration both at central as well as state levels for instance we have heard a slogan beti padhao schemes our central government has started another program also where it improves interpersonal relationships within the family based upon equality for instance take selfie with your daughter is one such program besides these programs there are various boards and commissions which are aimed to develop social economic and political position of women in our country central welfare boards state level welfare boards national commission for women human rights commission state level commissions for women all these are working for the benefit of women when we are preparing for the examination we usually get some ideas related to what type of questions may be asked and how best we can answer them from the view point of examinations different schemes legislations taken up in order to include women are very important whenever we see our questions from the previous question papers or previous methods we usually come across these questions will be aimed to judge the skills of students or aspirants 
These questions may be based upon structural aspects of various schemes, functional aspects of various schemes and also working of various schemes. Let us take some simple examples. For instance, if a question is on Vishaka guidelines, a question may be there on how to define a workplace or what is the structure of complaints committee. Within a stipulated time, complaints committee is expected to do justice to women. And what is the time? Is it 60 days or 90 days or 30 days? If we take legislation related to political empowerment, then a question may be there if it is only related to law, a question may be there on whether Article 243D talks about municipal government or panchayat government because two subclasses are there to Article 243D. One subclass talks about grama panchayats, other talks about municipal corporations. When we talk about various schemes introduced and implemented by national as well as state governments, questions may be there on the structural aspects. If any scheme is started, who are going to implement it? Satchara Bharat is a scheme and this Satchara Bharata scheme is linked with national literacy machine. In some states, it may be linked with Sarvasiksha Abhiyan also. So like that, we have to prepare various details about different schemes. We also come across usually questions related to the aims and objectives of different schemes. If let us say, we are having Indira Gandhi Matrutva Yojana scheme. So Indira Gandhi Matrutva Yojana scheme is meant for whom? Who are the beneficiaries? Where it is started? When it is started? How much outlay is allocated for different states or to our state under this scheme since it is a central government scheme? Do we have any schemes for exclusive groups like single parents? If yes, what are they? What about the importance of planning commission? 12th plan and its preference, what it says? For instance, single women is given utmost importance under 12th plan. We are having public distribution system. Are there any special provisions linked with public distribution system specifically for women? If yes, what are they? If it is linked with, let us say, some kind of crimes against women, because crimes against women are going on, and this is an indication of exclusion of women. Crimes does not mean only crimes or traditional crimes. That includes even cyber crimes also. How to define cyber crimes related to women? What type of provisions are there where we can seek some protection? Do we have any shelter homes where distressed women will be provided some kind of shelter? If yes, under which department they are working? For instance, state and central level women welfare departments, women and child welfare departments are having established some kind of taruni or some other shelter homes. They are working in all our states. If we are writing an examination, we also will be talking about various aims and objectives of specific programs under state government. Do we have any programs linked with old women? Yes, in our state, Telangana state, we are having Asara program where women are given importance. Though Asara is old age pension scheme, women are given importance. Let us see some presentation. Programs related to health and nutrition include Integrated Child Development Scheme, National Iodine Deficiency Disorders Control Program, National Rural Drinking Water Program, 
न्यूट्रिशन एजुकेशन एंड एक्सटेंशन राष्ट्रीय स्वास्थ्य बीमा योजना सबला टोटल सैनिटेशन कैंपेन किशोरी शक्ति योजना आर सी हेच और रिप्रोडक्टिव एंड चाइल्ड हेल्थ प्रोग्राम फुड सिक्यूरीटी मिशन अंत्योदय अन्न योजना जेंडर बजेटिंग स्कीम नोडल मिनिस्ट्री फॉर वुमेन द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ वुमेन एंड चाइल्ड वेलफेयर एंड डेवलपमेंट हेज बीन अंडरटेकिंग जेंडर बजेटिंग प्रोग्राम द एम्स ऑफ जेंडर बजेटिंग इंक्लूड ensuring that adequate budgetary commitments are made for women sponsoring training programs and workshops at the center and in the states setting up a gender budgeting cell in the ministry of women and child development step support to training and employment programs for women this program aims to increase the self reliance and autonomy of women by enhancing their productivity and enabling them to take up income generation activities major objectives of this scheme include mobilizing women in small viable groups through training and access to credit providing training for skill upgradation 